Hi, this is John from Sharp Mountain Games, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a recap video. I'm going to tell you about and show you some images from a recent Star Wars game I ran. It took two sessions, and we ran it online, maybe a little more than um, three, four hours it took to get through this adventure. And you'll also get a chance during this video to see the homebrew system that I use, you know, just to see if you like it or you can get some ideas from it. So I hope you'll stick around after the intro. So recently on my Discord, I had the good fortune to run a Star Wars game. And this one actually ran more sessions. I think it ran about five sessions. We're only going to take a look at the one adventure, which was two second, or two sessions. And now I use a homebrew system, and it's not strictly homebrew. It's kind of based on the White Hack game, which I like a lot, which if you play Black Hack also, that's very similar. It's D20, roll at or under. They also tell me Dragon Bane is at or under, although I haven't been able to um, play Dragon Bane yet. Now, I use the attributes as broad skill groups, and you can change these. For example, I use this exact same system to run Star Trek, but I call it some different things. For example, instead of repair, we call it engineering, because that kind of makes more sense. And also, science is more important in a Star Trek game, probably, than it would be in a um, Star Wars game. So I don't have that quite as much. I have survival instead in the Star Wars game. I think it's very flexible. We use advantage and disadvantage if you have any um, species advantages. Uh, that's the case, and it just makes things run really, really smoothly. Now, I use that armor reduces damage, which I believe Black Hack does. Um, it's easier than building in an armor class into this roll under system. Uh, the way White Hack does it is that it it's kind of it, it, armor class is low, so if you have an armor class of three and you roll three or under, you don't do any damage. Um, I th I found that uh, at least running online or for myself, it's just one more thing to keep um, track of. It's not impossible by any means, but I don't use it that way here. And I would say that a simple system like this doesn't have to be this exact system, but for me, these kind of simple systems are perfect for online play, and they're especially perfect when you're trying to onboard new players. You're trying to grow your group or grow your uh, potential number of players. Um, so I think, and again, that's a personal preference. If you like a really hard, crunchy system and you have all veteran players, you know, go for it. But I think for online, uh, this kind of works. And Star Wars is kind of a faster system anyway. So they begin on this um, rebel um, ship here. And Commander Chalu is kind of the one who gives them their uh, marching orders. Now, not everybody here is... Um, a player character. Some of them are characters they rescued on the previous adventure. And they're to go to the Adaba 3 system, which I took from the comics. And there have been reports that there might be a Jedi who survived the purge there. There was a rebel pilot who was downed and who was healed. So by some mysterious, you know, old man from the, the, um, the planet. So we get to Adaba 3. And they find out that there's an Imperial picket ship there. So there's an Imperial presence on the planet. And they have to lie that they're going to be selling some um, parts for the farmers down there. And, of course, they have to do a little bribing of the um, port officials because there's some stormtroopers who keep track of things at the port here. So there's a good chance for some role-playing here. And then some more role-playing on the farm. Because what they were trying to do is get some information about, you know, where this healer might be. And some of the farmers were very willing to talk and some were less so. Then they got to do a little wheeling and dealing. And um, Jim Doshin is right out of the comics as well. And Mary Shan was his wife. Um, so for me, that was that's always nice when I can bring something in. Now, if you have somebody who's super versed in all the comics and really, really worried about canon, you know, you just change the names or something. Um but I don't think most people are even worry about that. You know, you're allowed to make your own Star Wars universe or your own Star Trek universe or Marvel universe. And then they head out to the bushes and, of course, get attacked because we wanted to have a little bit of action. We hadn't had any um, kind of action at that point. And we're attacked by some um, beasts who were left over from some Sith who were on this planet, you know, a long, long time ago. So this was just a straight out combat. Um, but it was also a chance for the Wookiee to try and intimidate one. And for the um, Force user to try and use his suggestion uh, that Jom Ando was an untrained Jedi. And even our protocol droid has proven very, very useful in that he used um, different 
uh, frequencies to try and draw the, uh, the attention of the beasts. And then, of course, they get to the Jedi's, you know, um, little shack way out in the middle of nowhere, the healer's shack, um, and they find that it's been ransacked, and the his labor droid had the head knocked off by somebody, so they did some repairing and um, put the labor droid back together. And that gave them a chance to use the assist mechanism, where one person, if they roll successfully, can give advantage to the next person who's going to be trying their um, attempt there. And the labor droid tells them that there actually was a Sith temple or a Sith site further out, which is kind of why the Jedi hid here during the purge, hoping that sort of the light, the dark side would cancel each other, so maybe he wouldn't be found. So they head out to the Sith temple, and um, they chose not to take the route where there were some Sith statues, but rather through this like sandy pit there where there was a creature, and I just pulled a Dianoga, which is the trash monster with some tentacles. Um, they actually noticed that when they threw a rock in, that the thing grabbed the rock and pulled it down. So then they threw in a grenade um, or a thermal detonator and exploded it underground, which was something I had not anticipated, which is wonderful. That's exactly why, you know, we play with other people. And uh, Maris Rec, that was a character who joined us. Everybody else had been along all the way, but um, one of the other fellows wasn't able to play the first session and he joined us for the second so you know just as always you fold everybody in and you move forward the game is more important than the exact fiction um in fact Brika chund our pilot down there at the bottom he's the one who thought of the thermal detonator and i didn't then of course we have the big showdown and it turns out there's some um bounty hunters hired by a faction of the empire the taji family again they're from the comics and one of the tajis i believe was in a new hope um, to try and get information from this Jedi who survived the Purge about how to build lightsabers and maybe take him with them. Uh, you can see the Jedi is kind of up there with that with that fine mustache. Um, he was our Jedi character, and he had been captured. And so this was, you know, the big shootout, and to try and um, force the bounty hunters away. And our protocol droid was smart enough to go and uh, release the Jedi's bonds so the Jedi could, you know, use some force pushes to shove a few of them out into the, bu into the bush. And, of course, they were successful. And uh, they actually smuggled the um, Jedi off the planet by having him hide in a crate. Because this is a farming planet, you know, they made that they were exporting some wine. And they had the Jedi hide in one of the crates and brought him out. And then, of course, the Imperial picket ship had to get a few um, pot shots in before they made the, the jump to hyperspace. But they had a lot of good, successful pilot rolls. Um, and then I think they were also trying to do a little assisting with some navigation, you know, to um, make the pilot rolls more successful. And that was the end of the story. And I thought it was a good place to end because, you know, they, ha they have this untrained Jedi who was John Mando. And now they have a Jedi with them who maybe could start to do a little bit of instructing and, you know, maybe help him build a lightsaber and introduce him to some of the um, things about the Force. And that's where it ended. And I'm not sure. Maybe this storyline will continue in a, a game a little bit later. We'll see where that goes. Um, I also run a regular fantasy game on Thursdays, Basic Fantasy. So this is kind of a side game, and I don't want to um, I don't want to overburden the players, like make them feel like they have to be with me twice a week. That That's too much. So, you know, but we might come back to the Star Wars game sometime, uh, maybe hopefully this summer. So in summary, I had great players. And you don't need to be totally well-versed in the Star Wars universe. You don't need to have a PhD in Star Wars to play. Especially if the Game Master is, you know, willing to bend canon a little bit and, you know, make the universe their own. Again, playing this way was very helpful for me since it's sort of a homebrew system. You know, I'm always tweaking some aspects of the system, trying to see some things to make it run smoother, uh, especially with online. And I found it just ran very, very smoothly online. Now, could you do it with roll over and add sure you can that's certainly fine too but you know i like the roll under it's just a personal preference i think it's easy for new players to adapt to you know i was even a little sad i like to try and be very respectful of people's time so i was a little sad when oh we're reaching the end i, I could go another half hour or an hour here but i think it's better to leave them wanting a little bit more it's kind of like um, the original wizard of oz movie you know it ends and you wish it had been a little longer but in reality it's exactly the right length um, and I'm sure Star Wars and a lot of other movies are like that, too. So I don't know if you enjoyed this recap video. I hope you did. You know, it was a chance for me to tell a little story and tell you a little bit about the system that I ran. Um, and if you do, uh, let me know in the comments below. 
And if you have any suggestions for running your own Star Wars games or from running your own Star Wars games, again, let me know in the comments below. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching. So if you'd like to check out or purchase any of our products, we have three books that are in print. The Star Mermaid, the Dwarven Pickup Truck, and the Sky Tree. And the best place to get the print versions is through Amazon or Lulu. And also over on DriveThru, you can get the digital versions. Or you can get, we have a number of other adventures and character classes and even some stock art available on DriveThru. And then on the Roll20 Marketplace, we have some map packs and also um, character cards for use. So wherever you like to shop, odds are we're there. And hopefully, we hope that you'll subscribe and like the video, and we'll see you next time. Music